Right, Mr. Palmer here. Um, I did say it was going to be one video on JavaScript. Actually, when I start to put everything together, I've decided to cut it into three. So the first video is going to be an introduction to JavaScript and how it can be used. The second video is about the common features of JavaScript or some common use of JavaScript to make out to get outputs. And then the third one is about using the DOM. Okay. So this one is about basically what is JavaScript and what are the advantages or drawbacks of the different ways of JavaScript can be that JavaScript can be used with HTML. So remember, uh, I've talked about the three different technologies um, on the web that we use in conjunction with each other. HTML, which is uh, creating the structured document by defining the relationship between the different elements and what the and what that actual content is. All right. CSS is uh, all to do with the presentation and then JavaScript is to do with adding interactivity on the client side. OK, so the server scripting that's being executed on the user's computer, the end user's computer not on the server that's providing the resources. Now, JavaScript can be used in, included in three different ways, okay? So the first way is when you have an internal script tag, okay? So just in your HTML somewhere, you use script, um, and then you have slash script to end it off, okay? And in between the two tags, you have your JavaScript. Um, uh, I have included that bit in bold blue over there called language equals JavaScript because there is more than one scripting language available on the web. It's good practice to identify the language that you are actually using for scripting. Okay. Um, some of the code examples that I show, I will not, I will omit that um, purely just to keep um, everything fitting on the screen um, as concise as possible during a demonstration. Okay. A second way of including JavaScript is on a, when you have an event handler within an element. Okay, so whatever the element is, and you have, a, for example, an on click. So when you click on it, and then you can stick some JavaScript in the speech marks, or you can put a call to a function, etc. Okay, that's another way of doing it. And remember, for each of these, I'm just showing you a quick overview, and then I'm going to talk about the, the advantages and disadvantages of different methods. In the next video, when I'm going through different code examples, you'll see these in action. All right. Um, another way of, um, as I just said, uh, instead of just putting the JavaScript directly there inside this, uh, the quotation marks, you can um, uh, call a function. Okay, so for example, with that button, I've got a button on click, and I'm calling a particular function, and um, that needs to be um, executed when that um, button is clicked. The I will be making quite a lot of use of that um, event handler. All right. And then another way of including JavaScript is to put it in an external file. I have no idea why it says number two. It's supposed to be number three. Okay. Um, where you literally do script SRC equals and so you're specifying the source, the path to the file, whatever it is. All right. Now, with internal JavaScript, you can put it in the head, you can put it in the body, you can put it anywhere. Okay. You can have multiple scripts within the um, HTML page and they are basically run as they are encountered by the browser. OK, so you start from the top and work your way down. So basically any JavaScript that's in the head is going to be executed first as the page is loaded. Right. Um, anything that's in the body is executed as it is encountered while the rest of the page is being loaded. So an advantage of putting JavaScript or a reason for putting JavaScript into the head is basically you have your functions and any global um, variables, any data structures like arrays that need to be used anywhere else in your um, code. OK, so anywhere else on your page where you're have functions that are being called. Um, you have uh, functions that are using gl um, global data structures. They need to be sorted out in the head because then basically in the body, you call those functions and you access the data as you need it. Now, external JavaScript, um, similar to external um, style sheets when you had CSS um, in a separate file, basically it's easier to manage your code. You can reuse the code, all right? Um, so you have multiple pages uh, referencing the same um, JavaScript files, so those those functions are available across different um, pages without you having to rewrite and include them in every single page. And obviously, you've got advantages related to browser caching because if you've gone on the first page, you download that first um, uh, the JavaScript files that are linked to that. Then when you click on a link and go to the second page, as long as they're referencing the same um, external JavaScript files, then um, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 browsing of the following pages, the successive pages, is going to be quicker. All right. Um, all we know, uh, we know that um, anytime though you introduce any changes, you introduce you the likelihood of further bugs. So obviously, if you make any changes to one external JavaScript file, you need to retest all of the pages that use as common files. And the first time 
or uh, you 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 access that website which has those external JavaScript files, there are going to be extra HTTP requests being made to download all of that. Okay, so you've got some idea of what JavaScript is being used for to provide interactivity um, uh, on a on a static on what would ordinarily be a static HTML page. All right, and you've seen three different ways that JavaScript can be embedded within the HTML. All right, so the next video is now going to show you basically some of that stuff in action.